Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back to another Red Pill Religion podcast. This is another installment in our Escaping Atheism series. Uh, in fact, it's part of our series called Deflating and Escaping Atheism. However, before we begin, I want to remind everybody, Red Pill Religion, on Red Pill Religion, we are dedicated to the proposition that belief in the supernatural and the transcendent is perfectly normal, totally healthy, completely rational, and thoroughly evidence-based. So please support our work on redpillreligion.com. Uh, joining me as per usual this week is going to be uh, our friend Rob from Deflating Atheism. Say hi to everybody, Rob. Hi, everyone. Please be sure to check out the Deflating Atheism page where there's all kinds of fun stuff on there all the time. Also regularly making fun of the atheist follies. Now, uh, online atheism, I will comment. I don't know if you've noticed... Uh, deflating but they're in a lot of trouble these days not yes. only is youtube getting tired of them but they turn on each other constantly have you noticed yes um every conference uh, is turning out to be a fiasco these days well I, I think that's because the atheist worldview being completely incoherent on its own they're left with nothing but what they hate and what they're against they have no actual positive agenda so they have nothing to say on most matters except religion sucks and sky fairies and stuff like that now we've actually come out and we've been defending them somewhat for example in the particular case of this video that we're doing today this video which is on our channel i've got to find a copy of it where where did i do with it oh there it is let me bring that into screen here the sandboxed and censored godless cranium video now we we wound up uh, mirroring this because we do support free speech we always have we think the atheist community has been the worst offenders on offend defending free speech the so-called skeptic rationalists have been the worst um, but in fact since we believe free speech is a god-given right it has to be protected so we wound up mirroring this video of godless cranium sandboxed and censored godless cranium and just said we'd do a response which is the correct thing to do when you see something that you think is wrong now, uh, and as I said, since we're doing it, we're going to go ahead and respond to it as well. I'm going to repeat, the godless cranium should not be censored. He should not be taken off of YouTube. I do hope, you know, he starts thinking, well, gosh, if I, if I favor speech, speech, I've got to favor the people who are critical of me and my worldview, and I've got to be able to put up with people who say I'm wrong. So anyway, let's look at this anti-religion video. I'm not actually sure what caused it to be banned. Um, I mean, I don't appreciate it, so we're going to make fun of it here, but let's, let's just give it a look, okay? Here we go. Religion in U.S. worth more than Google and Apple combined. Huh, that's crazy. That's just in the U.S. Imagine how much it would be worldwide. Faith economy worth $1.2 a year. More than combined revenues of 10 biggest tech firms in America, study shows. Religion in the United States is worth $1.2 a year, making it equivalent to the 15th largest national economy in the world, according to a study. The faith economy has a higher value than the combined revenues of the top 10 technology companies in the U.S., including Apple, Amazon, and Google, says the analysis from Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. <sighs> Imagine a world where that money went towards humanitarian aid or medical research. Okay. <laughs> How do you know it's not? I, yeah, First I mean, off, go ahead. Uh, I, a lot of that money is going to medical aid. A lot in of that money is being used to help people. In point First of off, fact, yeah, in point of empirical fact, most of that money is going to humanitarian causes. In the yes. meantime, Atheists like you, Godless Cranium, and the friends who helped you made this have make this have had more than 10 years to start putting together charitable efforts. I remember 10, 11 years ago when it started, they used to whine, Atheists do charity too. They just do the religious people don't want to work with us. Well, actually, they would want to work with you if you weren't mean and nasty. And yes. in fact, you find plenty of non religious people working at our charities. But the fact is, you guys have had more than a decade to start putting together charities and all you really do is scream at the charities that already exist now the fact of the matter is if you go ahead and do any research you will find for example that in the case of the catholic church which we're both members of the vast majority of that money is in hospitals yes schools 
orphanages, free medical clinics, and uh, uh, other educational projects. You know, the average priest makes about $40,000 a year in the United States, which is not rich. It's not poor, but it's, it's not great money. Now, they have a little more on top of that because, you know, they'll typically have living quarters and uh, possibly a car that the parish provides to them um, for their work. But none of them are rich. You hear about all of these uh, these priceless relics that some churches have, and they don't all have those. You know, I don't think there's any priceless relics in my my parish, but what are they supposed to do, just sell them? I mean, yeah. a lot of them are holy. And then what good is done? Okay, you sell it and you use the money. Now you're done. Um, I, I, this, this, this really is, do you people, godless cranium, do you and your scummy religious hating fan, friends ever get skeptical of this sort of thing when you read it? We're doing the humanitarian aid stuff, bud. In fact, you're up there in Canada. I'm not sure where you are, but I can virtually guarantee that if you're ever homeless or need help paying a gas bill or just don't have any food, um, going to your local church, you'll find help for all of those things. You'll even find emergency rent assistance. And yes, in some cases, they're they're getting they're, they're getting cooperative grant money from the church, the government to do that. But even then, when they do, it's because they're the only ones providing the service. You people have had more than a decade to get into charity work, and all you do is crap on the people who are actually doing charity work. And you wonder why you guys are so widely disliked. Have you thought about this? Why don't you have any Christian friends and why aren't you helping them with their charity work? It would be my question. Almost all that money is going into nonprofit causes, into charitable causes. Yes. And, and by the way... It has to be pointed out that, that neither Max nor I are big fans of the Joel Austins of the world or the Benny no. Hinn's of the world. But most religious people have a problem with, with, with the Joel Austins and Benny Hinn's. That's right. That's right. All right, now I've got some kind of weird music playing here, probably from this... Uh, the Christian Post. The Christian Post, which I was going to go into. I mean, since <laughs> most of that money is demonstrably used for the humanitarian purposes you say you want it used for, you have no bitch. And in reality, while there's a lot of skeevy, scummy uh, charities out there, Christian charities, by and large, <laughs> according to Forbes... And many, according to Forbes and many others, Christian charities, by and large, are the most reliable in actually delivering the aid where it's supposed to go. And there's been study after study after study that has shown that uh, Christians or, or religious people in general, uh, corrected for every sort of socioeconomic group there is, uh, religious people are more charitable than atheists and agnostics. And they are. Study after study. Not only are we better at science, because we generally are, um, we're better at charity, too. Maybe you should learn from us. Okay, let's try watching another minute or so of this. There's some particularly odious stuff about stem cells at the, at the end. I hope we get to yes. it. Let's go we'll get about another minute of this. Wouldn't that be something? Video. <sighs> Imagine a world. Imagine a world. Yeah. I wish I had these arts. Imagine a world where you never read the headline Faith Healing Parents Charged with Murder in Death of Premature Twin Baby. The Mitchells, driven by religion, failed to send for medical aid when their newborn baby stopped breathing. The baby died mere hours later. If not for the intervention of the medical examiner, her twin sister may have died as well. This is nothing new. The mother's own sister was sentenced to six years in prison for the death of her newborn son. Worse, the majority of states have laws protecting parents and religious leaders from prosecution for child neglect, abuse, or even death for withholding medical care on religious grounds and abetted by this legal cover, at least 140 children have died of perfectly treatable medical conditions in the United States from 1975 to 1995. Imagine a world without needless suffering from faith healing. Imagine, okay, okay. Imagine That's totalitarian scumbags like this atheist asshole having political power at all. Sorry, that's where I'm going to start with this motherfucker. You're an asshole. You're a horrible bigot. Go ahead, Rob. I'll have more to say about this horrible bigot when you're done. 
Oh, okay, well, I, I don't really have much to say except that, like, religious people are, like, 90% of the population. So, of course, you're going to have a few bad eggs who do a few stupid things that are going to use their religion as, as an excuse or going to do stupid things or stupid or horrible things in the name of religion. But it's such a, a tiny fraction of society that, that, that believes in, like, faith healing. And 140 deaths over the space of 20 years... I mean, do you know how many people die every uh, year because of, like, inappropriately uh, applied pool covers or something? 140 deaths over 20 years, I hate to say it's it's a drop in the bucket. You can't use an example like that and extrapolate it to mean that religion is horrible. It's completely No, this, 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 of course, also elides the fact all the people who died who had scientific ideas on how to cure somebody who wound up killing them anyway. That what you're ultimately doing with something like this is you're trying to set up a class of people who are going to decide for everybody else what is scientific and what's not, what is religious and what not. You're, going, you're trying to set up something where you, the atheist, are going to impose your values and what you say is science and, 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 and what is, is and isn't appropriate medicine. I'm sorry, I will, I will stand more with parents who may make poor choices than I will with these ideologues who claim to be science experts. And by the way, almost no atheists who talk like this are science experts. Yes. Um, this man is going to decide for us, well, you can't withhold medical treatment for religious reasons. But what if I don't have religious reasons? What if I have what I consider to be scientific reasons? Is yes. that okay? And how often does that happen? In fact, how many people offering miracle cures that are supposedly scientific get killed every year in the name of this scientific rationalist cure that comes along. Give me a break. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, moralizing atheists are the worst human beings on the planet because they only apply their morals and they apply them on any, only on religious people. It's, oh, oh, yes. I mean, you're a scumbag, sir. Um, okay. Uh, well, before, uh, I think we need to both say this uh, uh, before we get too far into this video, but I mean, what is the purpose of this video? Religious people uh, have something that they believe to be true, and they act in accordance of what they believe to be true. Yep. So what, are you, what exactly are you advocating? That these people be stopped by force from, from yeah. giving their money who they want to based on what they believe is true? What course of action? Are, are you really recommending this Stalinist course of action? where religion has to be suppressed by force? If not, what, what is the entire purpose of this video? And who gets to decide what is religion and what is not? Yes. Who gets to decide what is science and what is not? I guess oh. the atheists will just do it because implicit in all this is that atheists are the default rational human beings on planet Earth. Who are completely and unbiased. Rational. Yes. Huh? Who are completely unbiased and, and are governed only by reason and evidence. Oh, I, I, I bet you uh, abortion is going to get thrown in this mix, and he's going to say that everyone who's against abortion is because of religious reasons. Uh, oh, because, sure. That's oh, cool. sure. I'm just going to put that again. Nobody ever got killed um, doing what they called scientific research or using so-called scientific medical treatments. I'll bet you that's never happened in history, right? Yeah, I bet it happens more often. I know a lot about the medical industry, including how medical research is done. I'm not saying there shouldn't be medical research, but you could stop pretending that these faith healing crazies, and they are crazy, although, by the way, there's also ample reason to believe that people have been healed miraculously. Um, these people just want to deny all evidence that miraculous healing occurs, even though we have ample evidence that it does. Okay, let's go ahead and imagine this godless world where these totalitarians will tell us all what is rational and what is not. Here we go. A vegetarian, she calls That's herself. That's my bubonic dance. Uh, I bet we, yeah, I bet we got some interesting stuff coming here. Let's see. Imagine a world where the bigots had to admit that their gay hatred is their own idea, where they can't say it's not them, it's just their God's commands. Imagine a world with no religious arguments against gay marriage, where nobody was stoned or beheaded just for being queer. Imagine a world where nobody had to be ashamed to reveal their true self. Imagine a world with no religion. Imagine a world in which scumbag atheists uh, bigots like uh, bionic dance pretend that homophobia is caused by religion yes. even though science has clearly shown that homophobia is genetic and natural. In fact, ironically, homophobia uh, has been proven to be genetic whereas today, as of 2017, homosexuality itself has not proven to be genetic. But homophobia is. 
In fact, homophobic atheist regimes are the most murderous yes. and oppressive towards gays. And, uh, uh, and, and religious regimes or historically religious regimes are the places where the whole idea of gay rights was able to come out. You only have gay rights because of the Christians' bionic dance. I've said it before and I'll say it again. You only have gay rights because of the Christians. And by the way, as soon as we stop caring, you're going to stop having them. I, I, I am sick of atheist bigotry on the gay issue. It's rooted in pseudoscience and pseudo-history. Yes. Gay people, you're welcome from the Christians, from the gay rights, just like you're welcome for all the free hospitals that treated you during the AIDS hospital. That was the Catholics. And yes. just like we're, we're welcome from modern medicine in general from the Christians. Ah, oh, these are oh, horrible right. people. Huh? New atheism has has been successful at, at, at kind of scooping up all these grievance groups and, and using grievance as, as a way of kind of uh, uh, prying them into into atheism. Which is why you find so many uh, so many uh, gays who are who are atheists these days. Not because they're privy to any sort of argument that shows that God doesn't exist. It's just uh, there have been some demagogues who have you know pried them into atheism, and it's really unfortunate that we've allowed that to happen. Oh yeah, and they've been turning against the gay males, and they've been turning against the gay whites, and uh, they've been doing that because the whole gay rights thing it, it increasingly appears was never about gay rights. I'm sorry, I was pro-gay rights back in the 80s before any of these people were even born. There were real issues there. And you know what? Even there, it mostly wasn't religious people who were giving the gays the problems. Hatred for religion is interesting in gay circles because up until maybe 10 years ago, seeking help and support in the Christian community was one of the major goals of the gay rights movement. Then they got some success. Then they began backstabbing Christians. And that's been happening. And I'm sick of being backstabbed. I really have been backstabbed. I've, I've had to walk back on a lot of my previous support of the gay rights movement because I realized they were lying all along when they said they just wanted to be left alone. Now, clearly, more than that was going on. And it's really, I still have gay friends. Heck, one of my friends started one of the first gay bars in San Diego. But uh, this, this atheist self-righteousness, atheists, you have no right to self-righteousness on the gay issue at all. You didn't do shit about the gay issue. It was mostly Christians that made that happen. And again, you're going to lose the gay rights if you keep treating Christians like garbage and lying about us like this. All right, let's keep going. Imagine a world without religious wars, without violent acts of terrorism rooted in brainwashed indoctrination, where we unite to build a world worth living in rather than suicide bombing a crowd to escape it. <laughs> okay. uh, another atheist who won't own the historic atheist violence, atheist witch hunts, atheist mass murders, and atheist wars of persecution against religious people. Um, yes. the you people. You're disgustingly ignorant. It's why we're right to call you bigots. You are. You're bigots. You're ignorant bigots. Go ahead. Uh, right. Max and I only believe in things based on scientific evidence, so uh, please show us the clinical literature describing this phenomenon of brainwashing. Uh, I, 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 I'm still waiting on that, on that clinical literature. Also, it's hilarious that you just that they just pick up on any sort of like grievance. It's just like suicide bombing, and they just blame religion on it. It's like... Well, what is it? Is it? You know, are they are they Amish suicide bombers? I mean, what's going on? Are, are they Mennonites? No, it's it's coming from a very particular sector of, of the religious world, and I mean, uh, certainly communist regimes have been responsible for their share of terror. Look up the uh, propaganda of the deed bombings of of turn of the century Paris. Those are all atheists who are uh, setting off bombs in public places. So uh, again. Uh, Atheists don't own science, and religious people don't own terrorism. But you can go no. back. No, it's okay. Yeah, I have a slide here I like to use, which shows the most butchering dictators in history. Every one of these a secularist. Everyone a secularist, including Hitler, including Tojo, including all of them. Um, most led anti-religious pogroms, doing what all the people in this video do, spreading hate propaganda. And by the way, kids, I'm not being emotional. I'm accurately describing you all as a bunch of bigoted hate propagandists, because it's what every one of you is. Ignorant as fuck, easily able to fix your own ignorance, but not willing to do it. And most of you will not address your critics either. You run like Steve Shives. You run like Stargon of a Cod. You run like all of them, because you can't face your critics. You can't face the heat. 
you're lying about religious violence. In point of fact, secular violence and anti-religious violence, which is only committed by atheists, far outstrips the terrorism. Which is why I'll say again, I don't care who hears me say this, I may be conservative on some issues, but I would rather be ruled by Muslims than any atheist I've ever met in my entire life, and that's a lot of them. And certainly I'd rather be ruled by Muslims than anybody involved in the making of this video, at least that I've seen so far. There's um, a uh, great Wikipedia page called the uh, uh, Non-Anthropogenic uh, uh, Causes of Death uh, in, uh, in, in world history. It's great for pu putting lie to this kind of canard that uh, religion is the greatest source of uh, war in the, in the world's history. But yeah, of, of the top 12... Uh, uh, non uh, uh of anthropogenic uh, uh sources of mass mass murder uh a religious cause does not even crack the top 12. Uh, i think yeah. the highest ranking one is the taipei rebellion but uh, otherwise it's all it's all genocides committed by atheists basically or, or for secular reasons yeah in point of fact while islam has the most troubled uh, uh relationship to violence of all the major world religions it still pales pales in comparison to secular governments, which have been routinely the most murderous and the most oppressive. And by the way, they're becoming more murderous and more oppressive even here. Supposedly Europe, look what's happening to Europe now. It's not just an Islamic invasion. A lot of the Christians in Europe now feel very besieged, very put upon, and are trying to take control back from the secular regimes. Um, this myth that Europe is all, all secular, is, is all atheist, is wrong too. But let's go ahead, let's see a little more of this festival of ignorance and hate from the atheist community. Imagine a world in which people didn't claim jurisdiction over the experience of others based on what they've taken on faith. You mean, huh? like, atheists? You mean like atheists who do that constantly? Uh, they have so much faith in whatever their atheist masters tell them is science, it's ludicrous, um, and they won't own it. I, I don't know what else I would say to that. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what he's talking about. I just take issue with his, uh, I guess, what I'm assuming is a, a pejorative reading of the word faith, uh, well, which is not what he thinks it means, but yes. No, I know. He doesn't know what the word faith means. Um, he's been indoctrinated to mean it, it, it means believing things without evidence. And which he, he just no evidence, yes. But she does all the time, with atheists do all the time. I've rarely met a, a, an exception. I mean, this whole video is more or less without evidence. Uh, they haven't yeah. bothered to go looking for any countering information at all for their worldview. They have no skepticism at all about each other or themselves or their masters. Uh, let's see one or two more of these. Imagine a world where L. Ron Hubbard, the founder of Scientology, would have never been born. L. Ron Hubbard was an atheist, an atheist. Yes. And atheist religion sorry to tell you Scientology um, is an atheist religion it is as hostile to the world faiths as all all you people are it is it Scientology teaches that the world faiths were engrams that were implanted uh, in human beings by an alien race so it, it attempts to trivialize uh, the world's faiths it, it wants to or basically eradicate them every bit as much as you atheists do and there is no transcendent creator in, in Scientology. No, in fact, that you get to the top and it turns out they tell you that there's no such thing, that it's yeah. all bomb, there are no gods, there is no God, all religions are false. It's an atheist religion. And they and use a lot of God, God. as atheist recruiting sites like, uh, uh, like Atheist Republic do. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and, and they don't worship Xenu, okay? Xenu is a bad guy. Xenu is yeah. a cosmic enemy, so there is no God in Scientology. No, and they'll tell you there's no God in Scientology. So you get over yourself. Scientology's an atheist cult, just like Richard Dawkins runs an atheist cult. And Sam Harris. All right, let's keep going. Therefore, we would have never been introduced to such a stupid, illogical, dumb belief system. But instead, this religion today is worth over $1.75 billion. This money, if L. Ron Hubbard would have never been born, could have easily went into scientific endeavor for kids a school of reason and philosophy and logic. And who's going to run them? You, sir? And what are you going to do? You're going to lie and say there's no evidence for God? Because there's a lot of evidence for God. Are you going to lie and say that prayer doesn't work? Sorry, there's a lot of scientific evidence showing that prayer works. There's also lots of scientific evidence showing regular church attendance is good for you and not bad for you. 
Um, why aren't you discussing any of this while you spew hate at me and my child who I take to church, sir? Yeah. All right, let's try uh, keep going. Huh? I like how he teaches, uh, you know, that teaches reason and logic, just with everything that came from a, a religious uh, philosopher or logician. All those parts are clipped out, I'm sure, in his uh, in, in his idealized world. Yeah, he'll be in charge of educating our children. Yes. He and people he approves of will be in charge of educating our children because they know what logic is and evidence yep. is. Yep, there we go. But too bad. That would be a good world to imagine. Imagine a world where nothing said or written was taken on the authority of the speaker or writer, where every claim was accepted only proportionally to the supporting evidence, where such evidence and the interpretation was continually challenged and therefore improved, where the support for the claims was not only readily available to everyone, it was frequently accessed by everyone. Oh, shut the fuck up! Imagine a world wherein atheists did not routinely get away, get in the way of that process like they do now, where they do so much damage with their scientific naturalist ideology, where they do so much to shut down inquiry. I know this guy, he's Paul Agia, and I've called him out publicly, and I'll ask him again. I want you to challenge, if you will, Rupert Sheldrake's The Science Delusion, the banned TED Talk that P.Z. Myers and Jerry Coyne got yanked from TED. Tell us what's wrong there. Truth is, endless evidence shows ideological atheists in your circle, Mr. Apologia, get in the way of scientific inquiry all the time and go out of their way to obscure ideas they do not like. Uh, so imagine a world in which atheists didn't do this sort of thing. Also imagine a world without Christianity. You'd have none of that science you like. And yes, that's because Christianity logically leads to science. Atheism does not logically lead to science. Okay, let's keep going. When I imagine a world without religion, I don't necessarily imagine a perfectly peaceful world. What I do imagine, however, is a world where we are living in a reality where people are killing over their imaginary friends every single day. I don't imagine a world where people would always have reasonable discussions despite a difference in ideas. But what I do imagine is a world where people aren't scared for their lives when they criticise or discuss others' ideas. A world where we don't make excuses for extremists because someone offended their religion. Imagine a world without organized religion, particularly Islam. A world where freedom of ideas doesn't mean a risk to human lives every single day. Imagine a world in which atheists didn't spend the last 10 years brutally harassing, censoring, and lying about Christians. Wouldn't that be a much better world? Blackmailing uh, them off YouTube, uh, harassing them, yes. Yes, all of that which has been going on from some of the highest named YouTube people. Imagine the vi imagine we didn't have to put up with the violence from atheists. Like, you know, TJ Kirk who threatened to break my jaw, or one of uh, Sargon of Akkad's little goons who actually threatened to punch out one of the Red Pill religion people for questioning the integrity of atheists. Or the Sutherland um, Springs uh, shooter, I mean... Or the Sutherland or Spring Shooter. Persecution of, of, of Orthodox priests. I also love how our how our how our little uh, uh, how our little uh, spiel assumes that God is an imaginary friend. Neither Max nor I advocate anyone believing in any imaginary friends. Now, if it is your position that uh, that the God of the Bible is an imaginary friend, that's on you to prove it. Until then, everything you just said is just completely uh, completely vacuous because it, it's based on an unestablished uh, premise. That's right. Please show us why where anybody's killed over an imaginary friend. Well, I don't know. There was Jim Jones, the guy who fed all those people in Guyana. Who was well, an not, atheist. Who was an atheist. That's because the world is full of atheist serial killers. And they frequently say, say anti-religious stuff when they do their killing. Yes. Let's, and, and they often talk like everybody in this video. Um, seriously, you're a bunch of vicious, nasty, hateful people, and you don't deserve any respect. Sorry. Let's uh, they, they always assume their own conclusion. They always assume everybody is operating from their premise that God is an imaginary friend. We are not defending anyone believing uh, in an imaginary friend. We are not defending anyone killing in the name of an imaginary friend. If, if that's your claim, prove it. Until then, shut the fuck up. But apparently you have no problem with killing someone who thinks they have an imaginary friend because atheists do that all the time. And yes. atheists are the only ones who do that. When are you going to own that? Any of you? Any yes. Imagine a world without hijab where you can see the wind blow through an Iranian girl's luscious, beautiful hair. <laughs> Imagine a world without niqab. 
where you can brush your hand across her smooth skin on her face. <laughs> well, without burka. So at the very least, you can see her eyes. Or better yet, how about imagine a world without Islam? Well, I know, I know why this video is sandbox because it's Middle Eastern porn. Yeah, you know what? The, the, they probably got sandbox merely for attacking Islam because you don't get attacked for being nasty like this to Christians. But I will uh, repeat my view that I would rather be ruled by Muslims than anybody involved in the making of this. And I will further, uh, even though I see Islam as a really troubled religion and a, a real problem, and and and, but 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 whatever. Uh, uh, and as far as the hijab, the burqa, and all that, in most cases, those women want to wear that, and yes. they will tell you they want to wear it. And it's mostly their moms and their aunts and their older sisters who make them wear it when they're rebelling against it. Um, what women in these cultures will tell you is that it ends the sexual tension and, and really cuts down the bickering and squabbling and competition between women so they actually like it. Uh, you will find women of other religions who dress similarly and they give the same reasons. Even in war-torn regions where they have the extreme versions like the burqas, those mark the women out as non-combatants and therefore not to be shot or blown up if possible. Yeah. In other words, in other words, while I don't particularly want to see the burqa or the niqab or the hijab all over the place, uh, if you are a libertarian or someone who supports personal choice, why can't a woman dress that way if she wants to? There are benefits to it according to those women. Oh, are we going to listen to women? I think these atheists are probably all feminists, so I want to know when they're going to listen to those women. I don't think they will listen to those women because I don't think they give a shit about women. All right, let's, uh, let's, let's play a little more of this. Imagine a world where no one spends precious time and money on treatments of disease which are not evidence-based. Countless lives are lost every year because people fall victim to pseudoscientific practices that just simply don't work. Often, these practices are based on beliefs involving the supernatural. Regardless of their origin, though, practices without an evidential basis are dangerous when relied upon as medical treatment. As a result, effective treatments are disregarded, and fatal diseases are allowed to run their full course, ultimately tearing grandparents from their grandkids, tearing mothers and fathers from their children, and in strokes of the cruelest form of tearing children from all, them above all else. Envision a reality where no belief in pseudoscience or the supernatural, which allow for such offenses to humanity, exist. And ask yourself, would such a reality be one with fewer atrocities in favor of greater health and happiness? In doing this, you take the first step in making that reality our very own. Okay, we're, we're not advocating pseudoscience. Neither Max, nor I, nor 90% of religious people are fans of pseudoscience. No, we're yeah, sometimes, so, maybe so. sometimes they'll use pseudoscience uh, given a religious basis, but as often as, as not, they'll use a, a, a non-religious basis. How, how does this have anything to do with religion? Again, they, again just like with a hijab, uh, they just think everything is just automatically the fault of religion. Yeah, furthermore... Um, there's some Orwellian phrasing in here that proves that this young man is ignorant of science and ignorant of medical research. He shouldn't be allowed to talk about medical research. He clearly doesn't understand it. First off, it's Orwellian phrasing to use the phrase evidence-based. Everybody using just about any medical treatment is evidence-based. Furthermore, the claim that, you, that something doesn't work because you can't find enough supporting evidence at the moment doesn't mean the treatment in question did not work. This is science 101. You just because just, you haven't found enough evidence to convince you, that doesn't mean it doesn't work. Furthermore, he calls out the supernatural. Let me tell you, we have abundant evidence in current science as well as evidence that we've had for thousands of years that the supernatural is real and matters. Let us be clear again on what the supernatural is. The supernatural is anything that doesn't work under the four forces of physics. And we have ample evidence of lots of that. Let's go ahead and turn this on its phrase and say, let's imagine a world in which the only medical treatment you are willing to, you are allowed to pursue is one that designated medical science authorities have claimed is effective. Then when we do that, let's imagine a world and when, wherein all the scientific claims in medicine turn out to be wrong. 
guess what? I'm old enough and I've seen this my whole life over my life. I've talked to doctors about this. One of the best doctors I ever, I ever saw um, had graduated medical school like seriously before World War II. And he said, when I graduated medical school, we were given a speech and told that 50% of what we learned in medical school would turn out to be wrong or bad advice by the time we retired. And he said that, that if you graduate from medical school today, the same will be true. Probably about half of what you learn by the time you retire as a doctor will turn out to have been wrong. And that's because what is often considered the scientific uh, fix for something, new evidence comes along and it turns out that that medical treatment was deadly. And we have multiple examples of that over the last 100 years, over the last 30 years, over the last 20 years, over the last 10 years. Therefore, ultimately, what we should be imagining is a better world is when, and when we, are, which we are all able to look at the data and make our own choices, which is what you guys are arguing against, which is yes. why atheism, as advocated by you people, is actually an anti-freedom, anti-choice, anti-science, totalitarian hate movement. And yes, sir, I just called you a totalitarian who's in a hate movement. I meant it. Because what right. are these people doing if not advocating for the eradication of religion by force? Well, that's right. Or just treating people like garbage who think different from you. Sir, yeah. we have completely rational reasons to think there's a God. We have completely rational reasons to think there's an afterlife. We're, we have completely rational reasons to think that mo on moral and other issues that these things matter. They're all a matter of personal opinion. To say that your opinion is better or more scientific because your atheism is the height of because your atheist is the height of hubris, and it marks you as dangerous, an ideologue of the worst sort. All right, let's see what else we got here. Can we get through all this? We've only got about fifteen minutes. Imagine a world where people gave serious thought to questions of why we love, why we feel wonder and awe, and why we consider some actions moral and others immoral. Where we continue to plumb the depths of these mysteries using what we learn to make ourselves and society better, instead of just deciding they're all inevitably spiritual concepts that had to come from God. Oh my God! What, what hypocrisy! No, the, the, the naturalistic account of why we th see things beautiful, why things are moral, is because there is some sort of uh, evolutionary glitch that causes us to believe that. That, that, yeah. is, that is the answer to every single question is because something in evolution that is somehow uh, beneficial to the survival of the species, therefore uh, it deludes us into believing it. No one has, has a more uh, emptied out view of beauty and wonder than the atheist, because yeah. it, it, to their worldview, there, there is nothing in exotic reality that is objectively beautiful. It's simply something with our subjective apprehension somehow molded by uh, evolution that deludes us into thinking things are beautiful. So it, it's hilarious, it's hilarious that he accuses uh, religious people of only having one answer for these questions. No, you can find in philosophy, uh, uh, you know, lots of religious philosophy, things about aesthetics, things about morality, all these things have volumes of, of, of you know, philosophizing about it throughout the millennia. And uh, uh, as far as as far as naturalism, it all really only has one answer to those questions. In, in re imagine a world in which atheists did not lie like this piece of garbage yeah. and pretend that nobody thinks hard about these issues before atheists caught, came along. Nobody ever thought hard about these issues. No one ever took data we had learned and tried to apply it over what we already know. None of that ever happened until you came along. Yeah. Get over yourself. Investigate something called Thomas Natural Law. Read Aristotle or Plato on ethics. Uh, yes. You're you're pig ignorant, sir, and you think I'm being mean. I'm I, I am being mean because I don't care about your feelings. You are pig ignorant and you are a bigot. You are proudly ignorant. You don't even know what you're talking about. You you really don't, but you think you do. It's really rather remarkable. Um, why are you people so widely disliked? Maybe it's because you're so proudly ignorant. Hmm. Let's see if we can get a little more of this. And where nobody claims there can't possibly be secular answers to these questions just because they themselves chose to stop thinking about them. So oh, no, no, no. Nobody's claiming that. No, nah, nobody's claiming that. Notice how secular, like atheists own secularism. 
I'm sorry, I'm starting to think of movement. We need a movement to kick all the atheists out of secularism because they, they obviously don't know how to be secular properly. Um, as it, like, oh, I'm an atheist, so I automatically get what I want because I'm secular, so I'm the neutral one. Jeez. Let's see another one of these. That wasn't saturated by mainstream religion. Religious messages have been so normalized. People will take on very baggage-heavy labels as a default, out of peer pressure. It's what's expected of them to do, like even if they don't truly believe. And thus, undue reverence is given to ideas that are as equally absurd as any other mythology we have left far behind us. Can you this prove of religion yeah, no is the stagnation in society. And this prevents an honest, critical dialogue from actually happening. You're full of shit. In fact, you refuse to have an honest, critical dialogue. In fact, let me put this out to you right now. I don't know who you are. I'm saying straight up, Mr. Skeptic. I'm skeptic of you. You will not have an honest, critical dialogue. You're invited right now to this channel to have an honest, critical dialogue with me. And I will explain to you why no one should ever trust atheists to talk like you. Um, for r entirely rational reasons. You don't know anything about religion. You really don't. And you're keeping your ignorance like it's a point of pride. It's ridiculous. Here's a hint for you. Something intelligent is running the laws of physics and probability. It's what we think. Is that a crazy idea? If it is, explain why. Anyway, you have an open offer. I don't believe you seek dialogue. I don't believe any of your friends seek dialogue either. Prove me wrong. Come on and have one with me. Yeah, yeah it's like sorry. Huh? Yeah, it's like what the Carl said before. It's like if you were if you guys were actually capable of proving that God is an imaginary friend or that there is no rational basis for uh, believing in God, then this entire video would be completely superfluous. There would be no point because you've already proven it, but you can't prove it. So instead, you you make this video that kind of implicitly uh, uh, advocates for the forcible uh, uh, removal of religion from society. Uh, and people in the public square, so we're not allowed to have our religious ideas when we vote on how we want our society to operate. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, uh, people, uh, maybe there are people who are forced by peer pressure into, into identifying as Christians or whatnot. There are also people who are forced by peer pressure to identify as atheists. It's not a phenomenon that's exclusive to religion. No, in fact, people being forced by peer pressure to identify as self-identify as atheists is extremely common in universities today. It's happening in some yeah. high schools. I've talked to some of the people. It happens in a whole lot of workplaces. God forbid you're a Christian and you work at Google. Mm. Um, seriously, uh, enough of the. Uh, uh, let's see if we can get one or two more of these in it. I'm going to do I don't know if we'll get to the stem cell goober, but we'll see. Imagine. Strip all of the emotion out of these arguments, all of the heritage, all of the baggage, and debate the ideas based solely on their merit. We would have won already. No, you what? Have been... This whole video is nothing but emotional arguments. It and is nothing but emotional arguments. Yeah, it's nothing but emotional arguments, and that's because atheism is ultimately an emotional child's position in 9 out of 10 of you anyway. All right. Imagine a world in which people didn't pretend to know things that they can't possibly know. Oh, like, sure. I, like, that, like that I have an imaginary friend? Like, like, like there is no God and it's just, a, it's just a delusion that I have? You can't possibly know that. Please stop pretending you do know that. Imagine a world without religious moral authorities. When faced with an action that conflicts with our conscience, we tend to rationalize it to avoid the mental conflict between doing something bad and being a decent person, one way being to project the responsibility onto an authority. If there were no morally authoritative religions in the world, then people wouldn't have the option to shunt responsibility onto an intangible, infallible, unchallengeable moral authority. Knowingly harmful actions, in terms of prejudicial or even violent acts, couldn't be excused by obeying the will of God. Of course, this isn't applicable to all religions nor all religious people, and of course there'd still be harmful acts and human authorities to appeal to, but no human authority is intangible, and any would be infinitely less infallible and unchallengeable than the moral commandments that are held with conviction to be the decree of God.
I, I will. But uh, okay, he actually defeats his own point there by 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 giving the you know by saying it's a qualified assertion. But if it was not for the transcendent moral authority of God, all you'd be left with is, is the whim of whatever uh, power happens to be in place. That's right. What you actually get when you don't hold that there are any absolute moral standards is that you can't hold your rulers to any standards either. You can only, they can only be held to whatever standards they will accept. Mm. Because they're not going to accept that it's automatically wrong to kill. They're not going to accept yes. that it's automatically wrong to rape. You just feel that it's rape. In fact, no atheist has any moral authority over anyone else. And, you, and, and, and quite frequently, most atheists will pretend that that's a feature, right? That that's a good thing. Well, I'm not a moral authority. I don't have any morality over anything else. Yeah, neither does anybody else. So you wind up with rule of force. And whoever's mm. most persuasive at the moment, you've given up all objective standards. You have no objective standards because you're an atheist. Um, whereas me, you know, I ha I'm, I'm the heir of something called Thomas Natural Law, which is a very well thought out system indeed, let me tell you. And uh, you can come to me and you can tell me I'm violating my own values and confront me on that. You can't confront an atheist on any values that he's violating. There are no atheist values. Atheists don't have any. They don't have any morals or ethics either. All right, let's let's see if we can get yeah, a little turn more. Turn on the video, please. Oh, sorry. Imagine a world where religious reverence isn't used as a shield for pedophiles, so that uh, they can. Uh, shut up. Given the massive pedo pedo problem and pedo apologia problem in the uh, atheist community, I'm not even going to answer that anymore. Except to point out that the secular school system has a massively worse problem with pedos than the Catholic Church ever did in its entire 2,000-year history. And none of you advocacies for secularism are saying shit about it. By the way, I was molested by Catholic hating atheists in the secular school system. Not a single one of you has said anything about that either. By the way, they really hated religion and they talked about religion just like you and they were pedos enjoy that enjoy the fact that many prominent atheists have made excuses for pedos and ignore the pedo problem in many in numerous atheist communities that have popped up over the last 10 years yeah whatever let's 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 go imagine a world where children aren't scared of eternal damnation in hell just for being themselves they can go out be free love who they want to and not have to worry about burning forever in the lake of fire Let's 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 go about two or three on that. So that's a reference to parents who over scare children with ideas of hell. Now, yeah. I tell we could have a mature conversation about the idea of hell. On the other hand, we have also reason, even in contemporary science, to think there is such a place. So mature yeah. people want to at least to discuss it um, as a possibility, since we have even medical science that suggests it may be a reality. Now, I don't think it's okay to torture kids with and it's frighten kids like that either. And I do take my child to church. So again, take your bigotry, Mr. Atheist, and shove it. Um, if you want to have a mature conversation with, with people who think there might be a hell, have one. Yeah. Stop telling we can't have the conversation. And stop okay. pretending there's evidence, because there is evidence. If hell exists, what, wouldn't the parents be negligent if they didn't warn uh, their children that there's a chance that they might tumble into this, into this world of eternal torment? Would they not oh, yeah. be if they did not warn them? I, but as it turns out, they're just assuming their own conclusion again. They're assuming God doesn't exist. They're, they're assuming there's no rational basis for belief in God. And they're assuming there is no hell. So if, if we reject uh, those assumptions, uh, what do we have here? We have nothing. No, we really don't. I, I personally don't believe anybody goes to hell just for failing to believe in intellectual proposition. And yeah. I, I, I don't believe hell is just there. You go there because you believe the wrong thing or because you once masturbated and whatever. Well, it's I think you're referring that, uh, specifically to uh, homosexuality there. Oh, uh, certainly it is, which I will mention again. Uh, 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 So-called homophobia is genetic in origin and is more prevalent among the non-religious than among the religious. And really, Christianity is your best bet when it comes to moderation towards that very real issue. But hey, whatever. Um, these people don't know how to, how to have an intelligent conversation with people who don't think like them, and they just make these grossly bigoted generalizations. All right, let's see if we can get maybe one more. Then we need to wrap it.
Imagine in a world where religion didn't teach that prayer or communicating with God would fix all of the world's problems. For example, after a natural disaster such as the recent hurricanes, people would potentially donate more money instead of gathering for prayer. Let's stick to what we know actually helps instead of. Where is your proof of that claim? Yeah, I think I've had enough of this. There was some guy getting really obnoxious, moralizing, preachy, and self-righteous over stem cells. Well, we didn't get to him. I've had enough. First yeah. off evidence in science says that that prayer helps people and there's ample evidence all over the place why aren't you discussing that evidence yeah Furthermore, and, and where, where's the evidence that that people would be giving more to charity if, if if it wasn't for prayer as we've already established religious people give more to charity than the atheists do this has been proven again and again and again that's right. It has been. And furthermore, most of the relief work during natural disasters is done by religious groups. Even the government doesn't do as much as the Christian groups and other religious groups, Muslim groups, Hindu groups, Jewish groups, seen it all. Um, Christians do the most of it, but we're a mostly Christian country. I'm sorry. And the prayer and the charity work often go together. Again, Mr. Yes. Stick, you're just a bigot. You're an ignorant bigot. And I don't believe anybody on this video does any regular charity work. No, if, they do, no. if they would, if any one of these people was not pussies, totally cowardly pussies, in addition to being complete bigots, proud of their own ignorance, they'd yeah. go down to the homeless shelters near them, they'd go down to the food kitchens, they'd go look at the free clinics, they would talk to the nuns, not just nuns and monks, but people who are, who are not nuns or monks who are in there. People puts up homeless people and does that in con in, 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 uh, in, in cooperation with churches of other denominations. We're Catholic, but we work with like Lutherans and Methodists and others. Uh, I, I, I'm Atheism. sick of this. Like, and, and by the way, let's start with the beginning here, where Godless was going on about how much money we have. It's mostly charity money. Yes. I, I, I just don't know how these people can be so smug, arrogant, cocky, self-righteous and completely lacking any skepticism as to their own sources or skepticism of their fellow ideologues, their fellow bigots, or any skepticism about any of this shit they're saying. I, I really, they're so proud of themselves. Come down to my church and come down to my church with my child and sh demonstrate the brainwashing and the horrible things we're doing, please. I don't mm -hmm. think can. Oh. Uh. All right. You got any closing remarks, Mr. Nope. Nope. I, th I thought it was a good video to do since we got the we got the whole uh, rogues gallery of dimwits there, and we 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 uh, addressed a lot of people. So I thought. It was I hope Godless isn't too mad at me because we've got a game going on Sunday. We're doing RPG stuff, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I really there was a time when I thought you know atheists. Okay, I used to be one. We'll just we'll have a friendly back and forth. Heck, when I was an atheist, I, I made a point of having religious friends. I want to know how many of these people have religious friends. Some of them probably do, but they don't have serious conversations with them would be my guess. Um, I'm sorry. It's rational and evidence-based to think there's a God. It's rational and evidence-based to think there's an afterlife. It's rational and evidence-based to think that religion is good for you. Um, and this video hasn't done anything except demonstrate that atheists don't do anything except crap on others. Hmm. I see nothing constructive coming out of any of these people. They just want me to stop going to church. They want me to take stop taking my kid to church. You know, this this year at church, we had something called the giving tree, which is where families who had a little extra could get toys and clothes for children who didn't have any. So, of course, I did that. My wife and my kid, we picked some stuff up for a 12-year-old boy we don't even know, and we made sure that he got some clothes for school and some toys that he wanted. That, and that, by the way, wound up being about $80 worth of donations, which we will write off on our taxes. I guess you might begrudge us writing those off on our taxes. But we helped a little boy because that's what Christians do. Because, by the way, charity is one of the Christian requirements. It's a requirement of other religions, too. Atheism has no charity requirements, and atheists don't do much charity work. I, not that I've seen. I mean, they do. But they've had 10 years to develop these great atheist foundations and in that 10 years, they've done 11 years, 12 years now. And in that, all they've done is make more YouTube videos about why the evil Christians are oppressing them. And, and uh, put, out, put out tweets mocking people who pray in response to the disasters, yes. Yeah, by the way, I believe in the power of prayer. I pray daily. And we have ample scientific study that shows prayer is good for you and that it does work.
So if you've been reading some atheist forums who says it doesn't work, get skeptical of your sources. Yes. And start branching out. I don't think most of these people will do that, though, because they're, they're more angry that somebody thinks different from them. And as much as they pretend they seek dialogue, not a one of them seeks dialogue. None yeah. of them does. So anyway, all right. Well, everybody, make sure to check out Defla Deflating Atheism's channel. I'll make sure to put that up here again. Make sure and subscribe to De 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 Deflating Atheism. He does these wonderful short videos. I don't have the art of short videos down. And otherwise, please give us a like. Please give us a subscribe. Please give us your financial and other support on redpillreligion.com. We're still revising that website, but uh, say a prayer for us, especially if you're an atheist. Say an atheist prayer for us. Anyway, tell your friends, tell your enemies. Please give us a subscribe, and God bless everybody. God bless.